In this video, we will cover material properties for enhancing your ray trace views. Materials are one of the most important elements of creating a good rendering. And through ray tracing, we have the ability to control more about how our materials interact with the light. We'll begin by discussing the methods we can use to adjust materials in our plan. Then we'll go through the dialogue for adjusting materials, specifically the material properties. And then we'll wrap up by looking at the most important materials to pay attention to in our plan. The information in this video applies to both CPU and GPU ray traces, although there are a couple of material types that only work in a CPU ray trace, which I'll point out when we reach that segment. This video is the second in a series of videos on ray tracing, so if you haven't watched the introduction or aren't sure about the differences between a CPU and GPU ray trace, I'd recommend watching that one first. We'll begin in this completed plan. I'm going to open up a camera view in the bathroom here. If we want to see a full list of materials that already exist in the plan, we can go to the 3D menu, then Materials, then Plan Materials. Here are all of the materials that have been used in this plan. If I want to adjust any of them, I can click on a material in this list and then select Edit. Another way to adjust materials is to use our Adjust Material Definition tool up here in our Architectural Toolbar which looks like a rainbow. This allows us to click on any material in the plan to edit it, and there are some scoping options in the Edit toolbar down here, which allow us to determine if we're editing this material on this object only, throughout the room, or instances where the material are used throughout the entire plan, which is what we're going to do. So I'll begin by selecting the herringbone tile here. This will open up the Define Material dialog to allow us to edit various properties about the material. The first panel here is used to modify the underlying pattern of the material, used in elevation views and vector and line drawing rendering techniques. It's not relevant to ray traces, however. The texture panel allows us to edit the actual picture that we're using for the material. At the top of this dialog, we have the source of the material, where we're finding the image file that we're using for this texture. Then we have its scale, we can increase or decrease the size of the image here. In this plan, the picture is tiling across the walls every 96 inches on the X and Y axis. We also could select Stretch to Fit, which will stretch this image across whatever object it's painted on. This is most often used for things like pictures in a picture frame where you're not going to tile the image. Here is where we can offset the material in the plan. Move its start point up or down or rotate its angle. So if you want to change the direction of hardwood flooring, for instance, you can rotate it 90 degrees here. Here we can change the color of the material by first blending the texture, which is the image here, with a color. This works well for things like staining wood grains, but with something like a tile, we would wind up changing the color of both the tile and the grout, which may not be the effect we're going for. I'll first hop over to our Properties panel. Properties are where we're establishing how this material is going to interact with the light. Basically, it defines how shiny, reflective, transparent, or emissive a material is. This is where we're starting to really get into photorealism. And while a couple of these will affect standard render views, most of these only affect how the material looks in a ray trace view. So when we're adjusting these properties, we'll want to change our preview over here so that we're using one of our ray trace options. So the first thing we can change about this material is what class of material it is. If we look at this drop-down, we have a general material, which gives us the most general options for editing, and we'll go through all of those options here in a minute. Then we have a matte material, which is going to have little to no reflectivity, a mirror material, which is going to have perfect reflectivity and ignore the material's texture, a plastic material, which has a lot of shine but no reflectivity, a polished material, which will give the texture the look of having a varnish over the top of it, a predefined metal, which uses the scientific properties of metals to imitate their real-world look, shiny metal, which allows you to use specific options to model metallic textures without choosing a particular class of metal, translucent, which allows light to shine through a material without making it see through itself, so like a curtain or a lampshade, and finally transparent materials, which calculate light's refraction or bending through the material, and which will ignore the material's texture. 
Now let's look at the general material panel so we can discuss some of the vocabulary found here. The diffuse option is to indicate how much of the main color of a material is going to contribute to its appearance. Reducing this will typically make a material darker and less saturated. Specularity is the degree to which a light reflects off of a material. A highly specular material would be more reflective and look shinier. Oil-based paints and reflective countertops would be examples of materials with high specularity. Roughness is essentially the opposite of specularity. The rougher a material is, the less likely it will reflect. Carpet is an example of a perfectly rough material. Light absorbs into the material rather than bouncing off. So if you want to make an object more reflective or shiny, you'll increase the specular and decrease the roughness. If you want to make it less reflective and more matte, you'll decrease the specular and increase the roughness. Transparency will allow you to see through a material. This does not control light refraction, however. So if you want a material to look like glass with light bending through it, you'll want to choose the transparent material class. This would be more applicable to a sheer curtain, where you can see through the material a bit, but it's not glass. And finally, we have emissivity. This makes a material look like it's glowing. It does not actually cast light onto other objects. We'll talk about adding lights in the next video, but it works well for something like a TV screen or a fireplace, where you want to have the material itself glow a little bit. There are some differences in material properties between CPU and GPU ray traces. First of all, the GPU ray trace cannot do translucent materials. So if you want to set a translucency, you'll need to use the CPU ray trace to see it. Second of all, with the predefined metal and shiny metals, the GPU ray trace will use the material's texture and map the metal over top of it. The CPU ray trace will ignore the texture when the material is set to use these material classes. So for a CPU ray trace, if you'd like to add a metallic sheen but keep the texture, You'd want to select a general material, but mark it as metallic using this checkbox here. You'll also just find that some materials look a bit different in each type of ray trace, due to the differences in how each ray tracer calculates light. So you'll want to adjust your preview here to show the ray trace that you're planning to use, so you can see the effects that you're making to its properties in that particular view. So finally, let's talk for a moment about our material maps. We have five different maps for materials. And on a basic level, they're designed to give 3D appearance to our 2D materials. I'm not going to go too in depth on most of these. We do have an advanced materials video that will cover them in more detail, but there are two things you'll need to be aware of. First of all, when a material has a normal map, roughness map, or metal map already built into it, you may find that adjusting your material properties is not affecting the material in the way that you'd expect. If you don't like the way the properties of a material look, you may need to remove the map before you make more adjustments. Many of the materials we create already have a map associated with them. Second, if you import your own materials or find that material from our library does not have any depth, setting a material as its own bump map is a way to accomplish this. So I'm gonna close out of this material and use the adjust material definition tool again this time on the floor tile to illustrate this. This is a material that I imported, and when you import materials from an outside source, you'll want to make sure to adjust its image properties to make sure that it's interacting with the light in the way that you'd expect. Imported materials come in at a 60% specularity, so when you're importing carpets or fabrics in particular, you'll want to change them over to a matte material or drop down the specularity. But right now, I want to set this material to have a bump map. If I zoom in on this material, you can see that it's pretty flat. There's no depth between the tile and the grout. But if I copy the texture source here, and then paste that into the bump map file source here, notice how the material changes. The bump map will take the dark areas of the image and send them back, and pull the light areas forward to imitate height differences within the material. The invert button here will do the reverse of that. And the scale establishes how much of this difference to apply. Usually you won't want to go too much higher than 0.01 because the differences will start to look too extreme. So just to recap, 
we have many different ways to adjust materials for our ray trace views. The texture panel allows us to change the size of the material, its orientation, to stain it with a color, and to add a bump map. The properties panel allows us to tell the software how the material interacts with the light by choosing a material class if it's a particular type of material, or by simply adjusting its general properties here. The materials that you'll want to pay close attention to in your plan are your tiles, hardwoods, countertops, glass materials, and any materials you've imported yourself. The next video in this series are going to cover lighting properties. They'll be divided into two separate videos. The first will cover lighting properties for a GPU ray trace, and the second will cover CPU ray trace lighting.